Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and a very warm welcome to you. My name is Frostbreath and welcome to the Misfits Racing League. This is tier 2 for the Emerald League Season 6, the first race for them as well. Just like last night we had tier 3, this time tier 2's turn here in Bahrain. The first race of the season, as I said. Um, it's going to be very good, we've seen some familiar names in this tier as well. Let's have a little look at the list for the 20 drivers that will be driving with us tonight. I believe most of them, if not all, are present. And here we have them. All the teams are pretty much ready to rumble. We do have Polypunk, for example, the uh, last uh, season's Tier 4 champion. This time driving for the Williams team. Um, sorry, the Alpine team, as opposed to driving for the Ferrari team in Tier 4. Plenty of other familiar names, of course. Uh, Remco van Putten, for example. A uh, very Dutch name, which I will pronounce as Dutch as possible, so uh, get ready for that one. Um, Deke Surf, we saw him in the chest last night. This time he will be racing. He'll be on the grid in the Alfa Romeo car. Um, disaster, one of the um, drivers that I can make the most puns with. Um, this time driving in the Aston Martin car. And of course, plenty of other familiar faces. Big Turbina once again stepping in that Red Bull, ready to rumble and ready to go. It's good to see you all again. Um, it was a blast last night with the um, epic race with Tier 3. Very, very, very clean racing. Very little penalties, only two DNFs. Uh, let's see if that trend can continue here for Tier 2. Of course, they'll be slightly faster. Um, if I recall correctly, last night, the fastest time in the qualifying, so the pole position time, um, was a 126.3 or a 126.2. So, if everything goes upwards, as the tier trend should, should suggest, um, it means that we will be getting very close to the 26 zeros, or maybe even faster than that, for sure, next time round, when tier 1 is going to race tomorrow at the same time. Um, we might just see those 1 minute 25s, but for now though, tier 2 it is. It's great to be here, and let's see who the men on poll will be tonight. The lobby is pretty much uh, almost full. I can see there's one driver missing as we speak. Um, and as such, we are getting ready um, in a moment. So let's switch to this beautiful new intermission screen. Uh, plenty of graphical updates. You've seen the intro update. All the chat was cat jamming, getting ready for the intro. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Just until a moment ago, I also had a cat on uh, sitting on my lap, my brother's cat, who's uh, staying here while he is away on a vacation. Uh, but she decided to leap off as soon as I started talking, so she's definitely not interested in anything uh, Formula One related. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's something, I guess. <laughs> So then, the wait is still going on. I see still there's one driver missing. So um, while the tension is building, let's talk through some statistics. Let's go back to the um, driver's list here. Um, let's see if Polypunk can continue his strong trend from last season where he managed to cling to the championship trophy by the end of the season, which was great to, sit, to see. Um, but of course, there's plenty of other drivers um, having a shot at the championship. I'm not familiar enough just yet with all the names to um, have any idea. I've definitely seen several fast drivers, such as um, Kane in the Ferrari, for example. We know that drivers like uh, Domi are probably um, pretty good. Senna Goat, not a slow driver himself. So, uh, yeah. There's plenty of chance for anybody um, to get going. The, load, the lobby is loading as we speak. We are getting ready for a qualifying. It's uh, going to be quite fantastic there. Let's see how close we can get to the 26-0. I'd like to see some predictions for the poll time for tonight. Um, keep in your mind that the quickest time last night was a 26-3. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Uh, tier 2 can do in terms of um, potential pole sitting times. Let's see what will happen. Deegserve P20, oh dear. <laughs> 
I hope for your own sake that that will not happen because that would be uh, not a great start to the season for you personally, of course. We are here then. The qualifying has officially started. Welcome to the pit lane. We are now watching the Mercedes and Red Bull garages all preparing themselves. And let's see who will be the first daring drivers to go out onto the track. And we see very few people attempting a lap on the medium tires so far. Um, only four of them at the moment. One of them being Domi, who is um, currently going out as we speak. That was a like perfect timing. His teammate is not yet exiting pit lane, but the first one out is here. Our fellow Dutchman Remco van Putten. Yes, that is the Dutchest possible pronunciation. Pronunciation, in fact, of that name. Followed right behind him by Fraser, who's also starting to get ready and warm his tires in his Williams. In his uh, striking orange helmet, by the way, that's uh, very noticeable, that blue car. So well, let's see uh, what will happen there. Thank you for the raid there, uh, Gerson. 12 extra viewers, so uh, that's the going to be good. Curious to see what the benchmark will be for the first attempt at a quick lap here from this lot. Um, if I remember correctly, last night round, I think it was a 26-7 that Grenade Goran set after his first attempt. And he was the first one to actually set the quickest time um, on the board. Let's see what these guys can do. Remco van Putten being the first one. The number 12 Alpine car going around the second to last. Or actually technically third to last corner. Um, and preparing himself to go around and see how fast he can go. He's got plenty of space between himself and the next car behind. Which is now a Red Bull. It is not Big Turbina. It is Wisp going right behind him. So let's actually follow uh, Remco right around, right around this track. And see what he can do. As he approaches the first corner there, be very sharp hairpin to the right. Do not enter the curves on the left side too much or you might just lock up. Cut the corner here nicely and onto the curves there. Do the second straight, a second DRS portion. And then he comes onto the next set of corners. This one, it's easy to go quite wide around here. And then there comes an interesting set of corners here. Um, which since this game it's easy to lose the car on this particular set of curbs so be careful when you go around that one so then a right hander over here onto a short straight then to the DRS measure point then which is which is going to be used during the race and there's a lock up yes this place is very easy to have a lock up as it goes downhill and a sharp left one which is uh, very hard to control especially your front tires on now then, to the left he goes after the second, uh, third, in fact, DRS point here. And then there comes this infamous corner to the right, this very long right-hander, where it's very easy to lose the car, as he says a 1 minute 4.9, which is already significantly faster than um, most drivers in Tier 3. So uh, that's definitely a thing to watch out for. There he comes then around the final proper corner. I believe this one is a corner as well. Onto the main straight. DRS will be going on right now. And it's going to be a 1 minute 26.2. Already the first ever time posted is faster than the fastest lap in tier 3. Wisp, Wisp just going right under them with a 1 minute 26.1. So, um, wow. That's uh, surprisingly uh, quick and a big difference um, already between these times and the times from yesterday as I'm currently turning off the heater otherwise I might just get too hot myself. Polypunk then slotting in right behind his teammates so that makes a Alpine 3-4 for the time being uh, but Big Turbina as I speak of that is slotting his Red Bull in between those Alpines so it's uh, all blue cars in the top five at the moment with Wisp, Wisp Fraser, Remco, Big Turbina and Polypunk uh, slotting in their cars and Leclerc now taking that P5 and now Deekserv going even faster and he's the first one to approach the 26-0. There he goes then. The benchmark has already been reached. So that's going to be very interesting. I'm now almost positive that we will be going into the 1 minute 25s in this tier already. 
Uh, several drivers have attempted a lap on the medium tires as well. Dummy, for example, now the fastest of the lot, currently sitting in P14 only. Uh, but he is just six one hundredths of a second slower than Disaster, who is currently the slowest on the soft tires. The only person not to have set a lap time is uh, Doni here. Uh, it's going to be confusing to uh, pronounce his name alongside Domi's name. So um, keep your ears wide open to make sure that I either say Doni or Domi. Yeah, that's interesting. He's out late, um, it looks like, almost, he's going either for two attempts in a row and then a third at the end, or just two attempts in general, as most drivers are now already re-entering the pit lane, preparing themselves for their second run. This man has yet to do his first one. So then, Deegserv fast at the moment, RO28 has slotted his Haas into P5 at the moment. As we watch Doni overtaking a Haas, in fact, getting himself ready for this quick run. Car number 23, uh, which will only be available in this game, as next year Alexander Albon will return to the grid, which means his car number will be taken once again. A prediction from Noel, thank you for that one. Wisp, Psycho and Domi. Um, yeah, let's see the McLarens, both of them were on the medium tires and they're sitting in the pit lane at the moment. Domi already having switched to the soft tires. Um, let's actually switch to the best lap they've set on their tires, which is uh, more interesting to watch. So here he goes then. Domi now trying to set his fastest lap here. Let's see what he can do in terms of lap times. Maybe he'll be the surprise of the night. Last night around, we saw several surprises that people didn't expect on the front row uh, and pole position, in fact. In the name of Eon and of course um, Ayub Khan, who in, in the end won the race. He's got a purple sector one then, Doni. Uh, we do know that the game often is a bit optimistic in terms of purple sectors, so I'm not entirely sure if that is uh, completely true, but if it is, it's very promising for the Mercedes driver indeed. Very close uh, past those uh, braking boards there, in fact. Very, very, very tight. And uh, pretty much on the limit on his first attempt already. There he comes. Second sector, 1 minute 4.8. No purple there. But a 1 minute 4.8 is definitely um, very close to the time that uh, Remco did. So... It's, uh, it's might just be a top 5 for him. Let's see what he does as he comes around the final corner onto the main straight. It's going to be a 1 minute 26 1 and it is a P3 there for Doni in the Mercedes. A purple third sector in the end and only one and a half tenth, tenth of the pole sitter, which is still a deep serve. As several drivers, including Wisp, are preparing themselves for their next round and their next attempt around the track to see he can, uh, if they can go any faster. There he goes then, Wisp for his second attempt and trying to snatch that pole position from Deekserve in the Alfa Romeo. Let's see what he can do. We'll know more as soon as he finishes the first sector. Coming on turn 1, 2 and 3, approaching turn 4. In he comes then to the right and now we will know how much he's improving himself. He needs a tenth. At least. He's about half a tenth faster in only sector one. So that's definitely promising for him there. To the right hander he goes. Improvements are needed if he wishes to stay in the race for pole position. As the yellow flag goes out ahead of him. There is an Alfa Romeo ahead of him at the moment. It might actually be Deek Surf. No, it's not Deek Surf. It's his teammate uh, Gian, who is sitting in P8 with a 26-4 at the moment. Um, on an outlap, so eventually he'll have to move out of the way unless he's going to be quick throughout the final sector. Here he comes then, and the second sector, it is purple, it's two tenths faster at the moment. He might just be the first driver to set a 25 here tonight in Bahrain. Here he comes then. Maybe Noel's prediction will come true already, even though there's still eight and a half minutes left in this session as Remco now goes to that 26-0. So, does Wisp still have that 29er in hand? He does, and by quite a margin, in fact, he goes faster by over two tenths of a second. And he's quite happy about that. I'm so happy, in fact, that he completely slows down the car to a crawl. 
uh, to let other drivers pass and doing a bit of a weave there because he is the first driver to do it with a 25797. Wow, that's really quick. Keep this going. I think that might have uh, put several drivers off, in fact, um, Fraser at the moment. Yeah, he's already set a lap time, I think he's now on a 26-0 as well. Look at this, the top uh, four separated very little, especially P2, 3 and 4. Only, if my calculations are correct, 24 milliseconds between three drivers. And we can add a fourth driver here with a 26-0 as Psycho crosses the line with a 26-0-8-6. That's uh, absolutely insane. Did we seriously just get 258 extra viewers? That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you, uh, Formula One. Wow, 360 viewers. Now, we can all have a 360 view then. Sorry for the pun. I just made that one. Both McLarens then, currently out on track. Neither of them sending a hot lap at the moment because Psycho has already improved his time and Domi has climbed up to P9. Uh, but that's probably not the position he wants to be in with a 26-2. But look at the differences between all of these drivers. They're so, so incredibly close that any tiny mistake will cost you several positions already. And I think Domi might be one of those guys who's fallen victim to those tiny difference issues, so to say. Thank you for the compliment, Captain Meyer. <laughs> Marvelous pun, indeed it is. Uh, we've got our second Ferrari driver in, in Tim Alster, who is uh, getting himself ready as he's sitting in the car number 55. I'm quite sure the driver number has to be updated still. His helmet, I think, is still Carlos Sainz's as well. Uh, that's probably because he joined later, but this guy is now trying to set his lap time in the Ferrari. I can't remember from the top of my head if he's a reserve driver or not. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, he is a reserve driver. As uh, Dark is in fact one of the uh, main drivers for Ferrari. And Tim Alster being a reserve for the team for tonight, as far as I'm aware. But he comes then round the final corner. Let's see what he can do. His teammate is currently sitting P19 on the medium tires. Uh, but he's right behind him. As Tim Alster now goes into P12. And his teammate... Heading into the pit lane, not being able to improve just yet, just like uh, Sano Goat. And who's still sitting in second to last place with the fastest lap being done on the mediums. So then, five minutes more or less remaining in this session. Several drivers still out on track, both Mercedes for example. Looks like um, at least Doni is trying to improve his lap time. He's now on his second attempt and if he's quick, he might just have a go at a third one. But he's going to be short on time and he's already given up his lap attempt here. He's going to go again at the end of this one, I'm sure. Either that or he's going to go for another cooldown lap and try again later because he's only got 73% of battery. Which might just be on the short end if he wishes to do another run right now. 81% right now. The battery is still on, and I think he's going to go back into the pit lane. Yes, he is. Um, it looks like he'll be doing his final attempt along with the rest of the grid. As one of the Aston Martins passes him now onto the line and starting his hot lap. Either that, or he didn't improve whatsoever. That would be uh, Leclerc. He is currently driving for his life. Yes, he is. There's no... Flashing red light at the rear of his car, which means his ERS is burning and giving that car some extra power Let's see if he can improve because he definitely needs to as he's uh, nearly a second down on the pole sitter Imagine that you're sitting in P70 and you're eight tenths of a second slower than pole position Imagine that would happen in the real um, Formula One season That's how close this grid is at the moment So the Clark, A10 slower than pole position, P17 for him right now, sitting right behind Hano 70. Who I believe is already out for his final attempt in his outlap. 
So um, the pressure is definitely on for all these drivers to improve as much as they can. Any millisecond almost would mean an improvement here in terms of position on the grid. Um, that's how tight it is. So then, car number 69. Yes, it is 69. Coming around the final corner, and let's see... Ooh, that's a bit of a twitchy moment there. A bit of an oversteery moment there for Leclerc. Might have just jinxed his lap there. He goes for a 26-3, jumping up to P11. Now, in terms of free tire choice, that's the perfect place to be. But look ahead of him. Many, many drivers now coming out of the pit lane, getting ready for their final attempt. So I have my doubts whether or not this attempt, uh, this uh, position for him is going to stay. As he now has a bit of a tussle with one of the Mercedes drivers. Uh, Maca, in fact. Um, and the other Aston Martin being right ahead of him. Yeah, I know colors, don't worry, but so many people get somehow triggered by a number. I personally don't really mind what driver number you have. So then, one of the drivers tipped for pole position. Psycho then, coming around the final corner for his last attempt to do so. He needs three tenths of a second, more or less, to be on par with pole position. Will he be able to do so? He'll have to make a mighty attempt because Wisp was flying there as Deekserve in fact now has a 25-8 on the board. He's getting very close to that pole position but it's not yet good enough. He's now going for another attempt here. The final one, if he's quick, he can still make that one in time as the time is starting to run out here. Uh, oh dear, and there goes Psycho's final attempt for a pole position. His lap has been invalidated and that's his chances to get on the front row over. He'll be now, let's just say, disappointed to say the least about this one. As we know, he will not be able to get in another attempt. And P6 is not ideal if you know that all of these drivers are yet to improve their times. Polypunk, for example, has also given up his attempt. Heading back into the pit lane, he'll stay in P8 and Psycho now going down to P7 as Han has done an exceptionally well attempt there with a 25.916. Car number two, the Haas driver there going really quick. Um, so predictions might be off the board here. As we see several names there that many people might not expect. In fact, Han has outqualified Domi in the McLaren, who set a 25.9 as well, but he is short by 5 one hundredths of a second. That's really, really tight there. And there we have it then. Fraser then going fastest overall with a 25.7 as well. Only 47 milliseconds quicker than Wisp was in his previous attempt, but Wisp is also going for his final attempt. He's currently 23 milliseconds down on his previous one so there's still all to play for for pole position he is the one who can ruin Fraser's day by reclaiming the position himself he has to go perfect on the hairpin it looks like it was a very good one there no locks up lock ups from what I could have seen there he comes then to the left hander here very close to the breaking boards once again he is still on that limit as the qualifying has officially come to a close now drivers are crossing coming across the line are Looks like uh, Dark is improving to P9. Tim Alster improving to P5, which pushes his teammate down to 10th. Psycho now outside of the top 10. Polypunk in P12. Donny to 14th now, in fact. As several drivers are out qualifying him. Uh, teammate of Wisp, Big Turbina in P7. So, what will the time be? Will it be quicker? Will it be slower? It is quicker, in fact. And Wisp claims the pole position, reclaims it there. And he has done it no battery left on the main straight but somehow he managed to out qualify Fraser by seven one hundredths of a second that's an absolute mighty attempt for the Red Bull driver here and I don't think anyone else is going to improve Gian however improves to p3 out qualifies his teammate Deke serve to claim third place there and on the second row it's an all Alfa Romeo row there very interesting to see and see what those uh, teammates will do will they fight hard will they allow one another to pass to get past in case that's necessary so um, there we have it then I believe that's about it Wisp claiming pole position so at least one third of um, Noel Carman's prediction was correct Fraser then claiming second place I think he'll be happy and look at the difference between two Alfa Romeos two milliseconds two milliseconds <laughs>
Um, that's a very, very tight teammate battle there. Very interesting. And yes, this is only tier 2. 25-6. Seven tens quicker than tier 3's pole position. If I remember correctly, that is. Beautifully done. Everyone has pretty much either gone into the pit lane, retired, or crossed the finish line. The only one we're waiting for is uh, Santa Goat, who still hangs around in P19. This is Reapy then closing off the grid in P20. So there we have it then. Two Scandinavian drivers in the top two. Deekserv in P3, Gian in 4th, Han in P5, Tim Alster in 6th, Domi in 7th, Big Turbina in P8, Remco in P9, Dark in P10, Psycho in 11th, and so on and so on. Uh, this is actually literally a Scandinavian sandwich, come to realize, because there's uh, an Icelandic uh, man, if he is from Iceland, of course, that is, in P20, and a Swedish man on pole. Yeah, Gerson, I think it was at 26.3, as uh, Dengu says. Um, but you might want to double check. Because that's for some reason the time that I do have in my head. I might be completely wrong. So now that the game is loading for the race, I'm quickly going to get myself a glass of water. Because if, um, if there's going to be as much action as we had last night, I will be running out of breath. And I will once again be uh, frost breathless instead of frost breath. So I'll be back in a moment. There we go. So, strategy. Like last night, I think some people are going to try the gamble of the soft to medium or medium to soft strategy. Uh, but we've already seen that, that the soft to hard strategy doesn't work too bad either. Um, if there's a safety car, the medium to soft or otherwise uh, vice versa is the one to go. Um, if there's no safety car, they are on reduced after all. Um, I think the hard tires will be a better shot to call for any of these drivers. Let's have a quick look at what the tires chosen are. No hard tires this time round. Last night we saw one driver taking the gamble to start on the hard tires. Uh, nobody's doing that here. The top 10, of course, starting on the softs. An entire uh, sub top 10 starting on the mediums. So, and not much variety at the moment in terms of strategy. Um, but you never know. The safety card might mix everything up. For now though, it's looking um, quite like a textbook strategy example for everybody. Of course, the game is predicting an entire different kind of pit stop strategy. They are predicting a two-stopper, which I seriously doubt. Oh dear, we have a disqualification during the formation lap as Fraser and Deekserv have come together before lights off. Or lights on, depending on how you look at it. Hi Rookie, welcome to the stream. <laughs> I think AWS is a bit confused in terms of strategy. So, uh, two cars already missing. Oh, dearie me, the other Alfa Romeo has had it come together almost as well. Uh, <laughs> he nearly took out the Red Bull there. That was very close. <laughs> Incredible. If this is uh, what will uh, happen during the rest of the race, um, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this. Here they come then, onto the straight and getting ready to fit into the grid slot. And then we wait for lights on and then lights off. Yes, yeah, soft medium is a very tight strategy if there's no safety car. We've seen it happen last night and I've seen it happen in tier four, but then um, we saw punctures as well. So it is very tight. Let's see what will happen though. The grid is forming up and ready to roll. 
I'm just trying to switch camera every now and then because it doesn't always change correctly once the lights are starting to go on. Here we are then. See, there you have it. It's three, four, five red lights are on. We're about to start tier two and off they go. Looks like an excellent start for the pole sitter there. He's getting away really well. But Gion having a disastrous start. Han having a fantastic start. Already challenging for podium positions potentially. But he's falling back down with a tussle for several positions here. Falling down to P6 now. Dixer reclaiming a third place in name of Alfa Romeo. Tim Alster having an excellent start. Climbing up to fourth place. Still having the car number 55. But oh well, we're going to have to live with that one. Han oh, having, having an excellent start. Getting away from the line. Falling down to P7 now. And it looks like McLaren drivers, especially Psycho, are climbing at positions here as he's now within the top 10 of his medium tires, having a bit of a tussle there with Dark, the other Ferrari, who's now getting uh, hampered by the Mercedes behind him. We have a spin, we saw Han there. Now he's fallen down to last place. He's had an issue there. Probably a come together when he tried to fight his position. He has now fallen down to last place. So uh, not a great start for him whatsoever. Definitely jinxed him there for sure. But it looks like though Wisp Fraser and Deke Surf are now the top three to watch as Tim Ulster, the reserve driver in the Ferrari, is uh, having a go for the podium positions. In the meanwhile, tier 4 champion Polypunk hanging around in 13th place, getting two cars right behind him, side by side almost. Uh, Sano Goat, who was in P19, already up to 14th place. Um, behind him, Kozzi effect side by side with him there, as he now tries to cut him off to claim that 14th place and start his chase towards the points. So then, Wisp, the first one to cross the line. And it's looking like it's going to be very tight between uh, Sano Goat and Kozzi. Side by side they go already for P13 into turn one. Uh, Kozzi's going to have to try it around the outside. The beautiful camera point of view. Look at the epic action there. Thank you very much, game. Um, there we have it. <laughs> Siana Sano Goat now staying ahead for the time being in 13th. Uh, sorry, 14th place as Polypunk actually has that 13th position. So then, back to the head of the field, where Wisp is trying to pull himself a gap to Fraser. But Fraser is definitely awake and he's trying to stay on him. Uh, but it looks like he lost a bit of time through that turn over there. Seven tenths of a second that separates himself um, from the leader of this race. Deekserf still clinging on to that top three position. Tim Eilster having after having a brilliant start is slowly starting to lose time. But he did have a good exit out of the hairpin there in turn 12. Looking good there as Remco has gone up back to P5. Got an excellent start there. Let's quickly see the uh, position change. Yes, there we have it then. Remco, after starting in ninth place, now within the top five and closing the gap to Tim Oster, the German right ahead of him. So an interesting start. Not very much so for Hahn, who's now driving around the last place. But he's already challenging disaster for P19. Uh... Another great start for Disaster either, as he's getting overtaken now by Han for 19th. And it still looks like everybody's very close. This is Reapy though, has lost connection to Yana, Yaya Sana Goat um, for that DRS. Uh -huh. Now setting the fastest time, he's definitely on the roll. He wants to get back into the points as fast as he possibly can. Now lost 14 positions, which is uh, quite a lot. Let's go back to the head of the field now. Fraser then, putting on the pressure, the race leader, Wisp. Uh, with the DRS now being enabled, it's definitely possible to stay with him much more easily than it was um, during the first two laps. The three is reasonably um, staying together there. Tim is having a bit of a problem, like I said previously, following them around as he's getting pressurized by the Dutchman behind. Gian, in the meanwhile, has put more pressure though on uh, the Dutchman in the Alpine there. Uh, this is not a great place to overtake, despite having the chance of DRS here. As long as that DRS train is going, you'll have to be really close to be able to make a move. <clears throat> Han then, getting back into 18th position, overtaking Kozzi, who's fallen down already quite a few places. He was fighting for 14th a moment ago, uh, but he's fallen out um, from that place there. So let's see what Gian can do now. On to the main straight. He's quite far away to have a proper go, especially with uh, Remco having DRS. And look like the fight for the lead is still going on for sure now. 
The fire is on between the Red Bull and the Williams. Wisp and Fraser fighting it out for the lead. Now the Red Bull staying ahead for the time being, but Fraser is definitely on him now. And it looks like Wisp is defending the inside. He is capable of staying ahead still. Um, as uh, Fraser is saving a bit of ERS, but look at the battery that Wisp still has. 80% more or less remains in his battery, so he's still got plenty of defending opportunities in terms of pure raw power from his, um, from his engine. Uh, you would say that he wasn't using DRS, maybe it's a graphical glitch, I'm not entirely sure. Let's see what happens here. His DRS countdown is running still, as Disaster is the first drive to get a penalty. And yes, his DRS still definitely is working. But look at how close Deekserve is every single time on this straight. And then compare it on how far he is when we come into the main straight. That's where he needs to be close. Um, this straight is not that important in terms of overtaking. So let's see what happens here then. Can he stay close enough to have a proper go? He is using ERS and he is closing that gap a little bit. Uh, but their batteries are almost similar in terms of charge. So let's see what happens. Can Deek serve have a go? Three and a half, ten separating himself from P2. It looks like it's not going to be enough as uh, Remco is having that same issue with Tim Alster. He's also very close, but not close enough to overtake. As in the background, we see both Mercedes drivers fighting it out for P11. Maka then, uh, now ahead of Doni in the 11th position. And Polypunk immediately trying to seize the opportunity, trying to get, to trying to get past Doni there. Uh, but so far, no success yet. Although, he's gonna try to go around the inside. Nope. From this point of view, it's uh, quite hard to judge. But he's still right behind him. For now, at least. Back down there, Han. The man who wants to climb up back the positions he lost. After, well, we're not sure what happened there. But he really is eager to get those positions back. And he's really piling on the pressure of every single driver ahead of him. And his soft tires are still working uh, very strongly, at least in these laps still. They're about halfway through now in lap 5 out of 29. There he goes then. He's going to claim this position. I'm quite sure of it. Here he goes then trying to go around the outside. No! It's Leclerc who's moving several places at once. So Han is forced around the inside, but he still manages to get past the Aston Martin. And onto the infamous corner to the right. And getting closer and closer to his teammate Aro, who is in P15 at the moment. So, the fight back is on for Han. Back to the front of the field. Fraser is slowly losing connection, which is a good news thingy for Dinkserv. Who is trying to close the gap still. As Remco is really getting close to uh, Tim Alster at the moment. All of them having a little look-see um, towards one another and see what they can do. Uh, the both Mercedes are still fighting another polypunk nearly pushing the the last Mercedes through the first corner telling them to hurry up and now he's gonna have a proper go there he's got an excellent exit it is though that Doni is defending the inside line polypunk then still on the inside is gonna have a real try here at the Mercedes trying to claim 12th position it's really hard fighting but it is fair oh no never mind that both of them are off and it is a spin and it's a miracle that the Senna goat wasn't hit and that's the first proper contact I've seen so far um, in uh, the first uh, first races for tier 3 and 2 both of them have made contact I think it was Polypunk pushing Doni off which caused this collision to happen. Now both of them are at the rear of the field, which is good news for Han. He managed to get himself now into 13th place. His teammate, I think, let him pass quite easily, but that is terrible news for the tier four champion and Doni in the Mercedes. Another yellow flag, it's Sano Goat, he's out of the race, it's the infamous corner that has destroyed his car and it's a safety car, that is the first for a tier 2 as Han has gone wide, now there's a bit of confusion there, no he can actually stay ahead um, of his teammate there for now, he went really really wide probably to avoid the car of Sano Goat who was still on the grid, or sorry on the track I should say. And of course, this is his moment to come in as well for a fresh set of tires. So let's see uh, what tires everybody will switch to. And yes, since the safety car is out quite early, it looks like several drivers are trying to switch to the hards. But there's also several of them who are trying to make the gamble 
by going onto the mediums. So, the first retirement has happened. Sano Goat, out of the race. Big Turbina in the pit lane, not entirely sure what's happened there. Looks like he had, might have had to come together because he's still standing in there. So, probably a new front wing for him. Allows me to take a bit of a breather and a bit of water. So this is how it stands. Big Turbina has left the session. Oh dear, he might have, he might have an issue. Not looking good for the uh, second Red Bull driver there. Psycho is now leading the race, followed by Aro and the Haas. Cozzy in P3, after being in P18 or so. After the few first few laps, he's gonna go on this medium ties as long as possible. Disaster in P4, Doni in P5, and Polypunk then in sixth place. Probably a bit of a reality check here for the tier 4 champion. While he was easily in front of everybody um, back in tier 4 in season 5. For now at least, it looks like he is um, a solid midfield driver. Of course, things will change throughout the season. There's 18 races instead of 15 this time around. Um, next week we do have Saudi Arabia, one of the new tracks. Might see some interesting racing there. But yeah, as I said, he might just improve throughout the season. Of course, the drivers that are faster than you will somewhat force you to push even harder. And that will eventually make you quicker. At least that is how it usually works. So the field is bunched up with the exception of Big Turbina, who is uh, still hanging around in the 19th place at the moment. I didn't see if he has rejoined or not. Uh, let's hope he will. So that he'll still be capable of racing. If he catches up quick enough, the safety car will probably come in at the end of this lap. If not, then for sure at the end of the next lap. So we are in lap 8 at the moment. Drivers, most drivers who started on the medium tires, uh, six of them, are still going round on the set they started on. Everybody else though, has changed to a new set of tires. Several of them gone to the hard, one of them being Wisp in fact, race leader, until the safety car came out. He is not taking any risks. He's convinced that the hard tire will carry him to the end. Um, but this is more or less the same situation as we had yesterday. The safety car is coming round, came out around the same lap as we had in tier 3. Uh, which means if the um, Fraser and the like can save their tires properly then they might still have a chance of beating the hard tire drivers, which are only a few. Apart from Wisp, we have Deegserf, Mecca, Reapy and Leclerc uh, done the same strategy as well. And yes, you're absolutely right, uh, Arias. 65% wear. I've seen several drivers say that. Uh, but I've also seen several drivers saying that their um, wear was at 75%. Anyway, the safety car is coming in. Psycho is leading the field. And he'll be quite happy with that one. As after he's uh, had a big round of bad luck in qualifying. At least for now. For the next few, well let's say 8 laps. He will lead the race. Maybe even more. Because I think all of these soft, uh, sorry, medium drivers up until P6 to Polypunk... We'll go to the softs by the end of the race. There's a bit of a lag spy going on there. Which um, somehow allowed Fraser and Deekserve to switch positions for a moment. And Psycho is off. He got an excellent restart. Aro was a bit asleep. Which allows Kazi to close up and try to challenge him for second place. Is he able to do so? He's having a look. But it's not enough. In the meanwhile, Wisp is already trying to get past Polypunk around the inside. Oh, sorry, run the outside. Polypon cannot do much to defend there as his tires are significantly older than... Oh dear, we have Arrow spun out. And that's the second Haas that's have a, a, a row of bad luck there. And we have a slow Aston Martin of disaster who has been taken out as well. So probably a coming together between those cars uh, happened there during the restart. So several drivers fallen down already, which means Wisp is already up to P4. He's put his, uh, a car between himself and um, his nearest rival for victory. 
Uh, Fraser there is still hanging in P6, trying to get past Polypunk as well. Deeksurf right behind them. Tim Alster right behind them as well. Remco in P9 at the moment. He'll probably be happy to see that his teammate is holding up the field so he can have a little go at them as well. Wisp then already telling Doni to hurry up, otherwise I'll get past you. Tim Alster and Deeksurf. Tim Alster getting quite wide there, broke too late and is gonna have to try and get back at uh, Deeksurf there. Three inside there, the Ferrari and... Uh, Alfa Romeo going toe to toe, head to head. And for now it's Tim Alster ahead still, but Deekserv is really gonna have to try and have a go there on his uh, fresh hard tires versus the fresh mediums. For now those mediums will be faster and maybe it would be wiser for Deekserv to bite his time. But of course you would be a racing driver if you would have proper, would have a proper go at your nearest rival and he's gonna have a go again. Tim Alster, he wants to get past him. Now it's side by side, he's gonna be forced around the outside into turn one. Tim also breaking just late enough to get ahead, but he's gonna have, might just have a slightly better run here on his hard tires. So that means the Ferrari is forced to defend the inside, but it looks like it's still the Ferrari ahead for now. In the meanwhile, it looks like it's Wisp going side by side with Doni, and Doni knows it could go wrong here as he had a come together with Polypunk on that exact same position there, but for now it looks like it's clean racing all the way through and through. Still though, Wisp really, really wants to get past as quickly as he possibly can to get as much ground between him and Fraser. And he does try to go around the outside of the hairpin. Now normally this is not a place here where you would overtake. That means Wisp is forced to go very, very wide. And now he's going to be able to get back onto the track. And that means Polypunk is already having a look there. No, it's Fraser in fact who's trying to get past him there side by side. Fraser really wants to get the hurry up and now he's right behind Wisp again. So that means then the plan of Wisp didn't really work out. He was a bit too greedy there trying to get past Tony. So that means he's gonna have to try again as they approach the final straight there. And look at weaving, all the weaving going on there. Tony having a penalty there so that means uh, yeah, there he goes then. Doni breaking, in effect, just letting the Red Bull pass. He knows the fight is not worth his time. He knows that it is quite costly to do so. So he's gonna have to do another strategy here. In fact, he's already going side by side again. He's got the run there into turn one. It's side by side on the inside. Look at the tight racing going on here. He's now got the inside line there, Wisp, and he's still ahead somehow, but that I think, if I've seen it correctly, means that Wisp will have, yes, Wisp has the DRS, which is great news for himself, as he's now gonna have to go fight with Fraser. So lucky for him he had that DRS, otherwise Fraser might have gone past him. He gets pushed wide here by Donny. There's so many things going on. Tim Alster having a fight there with Polypunk, who's not giving up yet that easily, but good lord, look what's going on here. Tony and Fraser still fighting there for a position. Tim Alster trying to have a go with them as well. We see a yellow flag as Domi with the M instead of the N has spun out <laughs> in his McLaren. Um, Doni in uh, though still ahead of Fraser. And Fraser will not like all of the heavy fighting going on. Of course, that's totally the right of any of those drivers on the older tires as they are not getting any blue flags whatsoever. It's still their position to fight if they do please. So, do so or whatever. Yeah, completely got lost for words there. If they want to defend, they can completely and fairly defend. As long as their tires will hold out. I mean, I think they will stretch their tires to go for the uh, softs, which means they'll have to last at least another seven or eight laps. So they're gonna have to be careful um, sooner or later. Wisp is now clear um, of Doni. And Fraser still wants to get past. Polypunk then making way. No, not yet for his teammate. As Deekserv is the one actually fighting with the second Alpine there. He's fallen down to P9 already. The hard tire is currently not working for Deekserv as he wants them to work. As Remco is getting uh, uh, led past by his teammate there. Polypunk making way for his quicker teammate on the fresher tires. He will now be able to challenge Tim Alster. Once again, the fight between the German and the Dutchman is going on once more. And we have another come together. It is Haas and Dijkserv, I'm afraid, who have had a collision from what it looks like as both of the cars are off. Look at them both. Oh, they are have a come together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. They have come together after they came together. Um, yeah, that just happened. Uh, that's interesting. I've never seen this before. 
<laughs> it's the last master plan. Sorry, I just got completely distracted by that. Look at Psycho in the meanwhile, having pulled the gap of 2.4 seconds to Kossi. That's great news for him. Uh, Wisp, though, getting very close to the Alpha Tauri. Um, that's insane. I've never seen that before. Both cars tried to get back on the track at the exact same place. <laughs> they immediately went off again. Oh, man. Incredible. So then... Fraser is now finally involved. What on earth is going on? There's a, a rocket like Ferrari going in between the uh, Mercedes and the Williams there. It looks like it's a four way battle for fourth position. Tim Alster is suddenly going haywire. Uh, look at them go, getting pushed off by the Williams there. And in the meanwhile, just ahead of them, Wisp is finally getting ahead of Cozzy, which is good for him. Three wide into turn four. All of these cars are going. Remco is getting ahead of the Ferrari, but Tim Alster also really wants to get back at him for that one. I don't think Fraser especially is going to appreciate this as he was fighting for the lead moments ago and now he's fallen down to sixth place which effectively is P4 after the uh, cars ahead of them, Cozzy and Psycho in fact, will come in for their next set of tires but good god what's going on right there. Still a four-way battle it is then between all these cars as uh, we have another car mixing themselves into this fight here. The other Ferrari of Dark, car number 66, is now mixing himself into the battle here um, as Doni and Polypunk are really starting to lose out on their old medium tires. But if they want to go to the soft, they'll have to stretch it out for a bit more. Now they are tussled and tangled in between themselves with a fight for P8, which used to be quite a bit uh, higher up. Um, on the grid moments ago and looks like Polypunk really wants to get to the inside on the final corner Doni having the DRS um, and Polypunk as well of course uh, due to them all being uh, within one second of one another and it looks like Dark is having a go at Fraser and we have the second retirement as Aro has spun out the final corner that's the second safety car of the evening my goodness this race is eventful the Haas cars are having a terrible night. There's no other words. Bad for Psycho indeed. He was building out a nice lead and was actually looking like he was capable of holding the lead at least for a bit longer. His pace was absolutely immense on those old mediums. Um, now Bitter says it's perfect for Psycho. So I'm interested to see whether this is going to be bad or good. Um, I do know that I... Um, I'm, what will the hard tire users do? Yeah, Psycho will have to go for the hard tires now. Those softs will not last 15 laps. So those guys who stayed out during the first safety car, I'm afraid, are now screwed. And the guys who put on the hard tires during that first safety car can now put on mediums to be faster for the next restart. Interesting. What will they do? Will they stay out with those six lap old hearts? Or... Will they go to the mediums? Let's see what happens. He goes soft. So that's a big of a, a bit of a stretch. I see two drivers going to the soft. Disaster and Deegser have gone to the soft tires. I think they might just calculate another safety car into their strategy. It is risky, very risky, yes. In comes Psycho, in comes Wisp, in comes Kazi, and many other drivers. In fact, Remco and Tim are coming in as well, despite their mediums not being too old. I think they're going to change to a new set of mediums. And there we go, as I predicted, Wisp going to a new set of mediums. And let's see what drivers such as uh, Remco will do then. A new set of mediums as well. We see some... Oh dear. He is going to do the soft tires. Hoo hoo hoo. Oh dear, speeding in the pit lane. Speeding on a safety car, in fact, a drive through penalty for disaster. Yeah, I hate to say it, but that's definitely a disaster for him. Just had to do it, sorry. Interesting. And it's two tire drivers on the hard tire who stayed out. Reapy and Clark, Le Clark, sorry, staying out. Dark on his seven lap old mediums is also staying out. Hmm. So now it's no longer textbook strategy. It's no longer soft to medium or medium to soft. It's um, whatever you think works best. And if you think the soft tires are the best to use until the end of the race, like Psycho and Cozzy do, 
then fair enough. If you can make it work, it works. But you're gonna have to be conservative with your tires. The safety car will not come in by the end of this lap, so that's their luck. They'll have one more lap to save the tires as much as they can. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I know we talked about these jokes, I just had to do it. And I'm going to do it many more times. <laughs> I'm probably also going to jinx Polypunk, like I did many times last season. There he is, sitting around in P11 at the moment, in his Alpine. So, a uh, very, very, very eventful uh, first half of the race, to say the least. Let's see what the second half of the race will bring us. If it's going to be as eventful as the first half, I'm totally ready for that. I somehow saw it coming when we had two disqualifications under the... Uh, oh dear, Polypunk is coming in uh, under the formation lap. I was about to finish my sentence there. Uh, it's two driver who disqualify there. And uh, Polypunk is in. Domi is in as well. What's going on here? They are going for the soft tires, but by that, they've lost track position. These drivers have changed their mind while the camera decides to film the asphalt. Interesting, and now, oh dear, I think there's a drunk man behind this camera. Let's quickly switch. Interesting. <laughs> Some of these cameras are just weird. Just like a few laps ago, where we saw the epic battle filmed from like half a kilometer distance. <clears throat> right, my, me and my throat are ready for the final half of the race. So let it, let it come. Bring it to me. I'm excited. <laughs> Seems to be a bit confusion going on at the rear of the grid. Polypunk and Han, they're not sure who should be in P16. But of course that should be Han, as um, I know Polypunk had fallen down back to P17. Han left the session there, might have been a bit of an issue. Yeah, it might be Kimmy. <laughs> Was actually using that camera. Um, this is interesting, Domi is taking it very slow. Very, very slow. And we have a collision penalty between Han and Polypunk. And Polypunk has lost... Oh, I jinxed it. I think I jinxed him again. He's lost his front wing. Deary me. The safety car will not come in. I think Domi is holding back to make sure the safety car stays out another lap. Look at this man playing some ultra strategy. Interesting. I'm 100% I'm positive he's doing this to make sure the safety car stays out under the lap. <laughs> There's no other way. There's no reason why he should stay behind this far. Now he's closing up. Now he's closing up. I don't know if that's allowed or not, but I'm almost positive he's holding back to make sure the safety car stays out. One more lap. Han and Polypunk coming in for another pit stop. Polypunk then retiring from the race as Han rejoins. You'll be surprised to see his AI gone into the pit lane, changing to a set of... Well, what will it be? To a set of soft tires. Used soft tires, it looks like. Those are definitely not fresh tires. Oh dear, there's seven lap old soft tires. Oh my god, I think his race is done as well. Oh, man. It couldn't have gone worse for the Haas team. Domi saved Polly. Well, Polly is retired now. So I'm afraid that doesn't really go. <clears throat> he is probably... He was probably trying to hold it for uh, Psycho. Who's now hanging around in fourth place with those soft tires. And there, there's 12 laps to go. And that is something the soft tires, if proper nursing, can do. So, Psycho, who started at, well, what position was it again? P11. And now has a shot at winning the race. And if he does so, he might be the driver of the day for me. 
the top three then didn't come in when they had the opportunity. Now they're going to have to finish the race on the tires they chosen during the first safety car. Psycho, on paper, now has the best chance to win, but he does have Wisp behind him, who is perfectly capable of nursing his tires better because he's on the mediums, he doesn't have to go um, conservative. And the field is slowing down to a crawl. Dark leading the way in his Ferrari. Getting ready to go racing. When will he go? Will he go into the final corner? Will he wait until the main straight? It looks like Reapy is quite awake and ready to roll. He's still going slow and there he goes and off he is. And it looks like someone is exceptionally awake. It's Psycho who had to actually relinquish position as he was getting ahead of them too early. Which is bad news for him. He was too much awake. Which now means he's already lost the position to Wisp. But he's still going to try side by side into turn one. But it is Wisp who gets the job done. And immediately Wisp goes for Leclerc already into third place. And maybe even trying to challenge second position there. As he tries to push the Aston Martin away. He knows he wants to get ahead of the but the best restart is definitely for Wisp as Psycho was way too alert and got ahead of everybody way too soon. He's back into fourth place though, but now he's on the back foot trying to challenge for the win. Great restart for the Red Bull, not so much for the McLaren there as Leclerc is now with his older tires starting to hold up the other drivers there on the fresher tires. Remco trying to get past him as Psycho is already challenging Reapy for P3 and Wisp is already in second place. The man is flying and Psycho wants to stay with him as much as he possibly can going side by side with Reapy on the older hard tires and nearly getting into contact with Wisp there. Now he's back onto him and the fight is on for the win. Dark had a great restart, one and a half seconds, no fights for him, and there's contact there, I saw a bit of front wing flying, I think it was a bit of a front wing of the Aston Martin of Leclerc. Um, yes it was, he had contact there with Reapy, and that means Remco will have to go past him now. I think uh, Leclerc knows this and will probably move out of the way as soon as he can, he's going to turn to the right of the track to go into the pit lane, and that's pretty much his race over, unless another safety car comes out, but there we have it then, Psycho fighting with Wisp for second place, here he comes, trying to go around the inside, will Wisp try to defend hard here, or does he know that the soft tires will probably drop off by the end of this race and conserve his tires a bit more there, yes he does, so Wisp then now behind Psycho once again, he's made up those places he nearly lost at the start, many drivers are coming in for another pit stop, plenty of people had contact, Deekserve included, while he was on third or fourth place at the race start, he's now fallen down to third 13th, no even 15th position there, so terrible news there for the Alfa Romeo, his teammate Gion also so, had a great position during the race start, has lost positions as well. This is uh, Kozzi trying to get past his own teammate and he's letting him past of course as he's on a much fresher and quicker sort of tire. That's very much agreed on Waffle. Wisp needs to be patient and I think he knows a Psycho is absolutely flying with the tires. He's tearing them to stretch. Screw conservation! That's what he thinks. Because he's already on the tail of Dark. Yes, his pace is clear, but do keep in mind he does have those soft tires, which will, if he keeps up this pace, drop off badly by the end of the race. In fact, Remco is now starting to get ahead of Wisp there. Wisp, who looked like an easy victory uh, tonight, is now having to fight for his life to stay at the Alpine Drive, and the Alpine Drive is pushing him around the final corner, and getting a great exit there, a bit oversteery, nearly getting pushed into the pit lane, nearly in the wall there, Wisp is not happy in contact, he's very unhappy in slowing down there, letting him Everybody passed. What's happened? What has happened here with Wisp? Contact with Remco, but I'm not entirely sure why he's now completely stopping on the track. What's happening? It looks like he's incredibly angry with everybody around him. What's happened? It's complete confused. I'm confused. I don't know what's happening there. I just don't know. Domi now back into sixth place. He was at the rear of the field starting this race uh, safety car. Uh, but he is now up into P6 already as Psycho, we missed that unfortunately due to the confusing situation with uh, Wisp, is now leading the race, Dark cannot keep up <laughs> and Remco is now losing time to Kozzi. Kozzi on the fast soft tires might just go up into the podium positions. He was way down the field at the first half of the race, he's now all the way up into P4. Fraser meanwhile is losing sight of that race win he so wants to have. But what Wisp is going 
to do there. I'm not sure. I don't know what happened. Utter, utter confusion. We're going very wide there, Fraser. That's a track winding for sure. Kossi ahead of him, though, does have that three-second penalty. And Domi is now challenging him for P5. He will have DRS there. I don't think Fraser will. He's barely outside of it. Yeah, he's just outside of it, which is great news for Domi. And now there's two McLarens in the top five. It didn't look great at the start of the race for both of them, but here they are. In the top five he goes, and now he's going to ch charge up all the way to Kazi. Can he do so, though? Fraser having the DRS, but he's not close enough to make a move. In the meanwhile, the uh, Doni with the N in his name is uh, racing Reapy for P8. Reapy, after being second, is now defalling down to P8. He probably should have come in for a fresh set of tires. Big Turbina, in the meanwhile, setting the fastest lap as Gion is in the pit lane. Wisp is in the pit lane as well, but he's just hanging around in P11. Four seconds clear of P10. <clears throat> so the FIA will for sure have a busy night with Tier 2. Yeah, the softs will probably drop off, so it's looking ever better for Remco. There's still 8 laps to go, but Remco's battery is almost dead, so... It's still everybody's game. You never know what happens. Let's see how everybody's battery is doing. His battery, if Psycho's battery is doing meh. Dark's battery is not great. Remco's battery is pretty much dead. Kozzi's battery is also quite low. Domi's is quite low as well. Um, but let's see. Domi and Reapy fighting for P8. Come on camera, please switch to a proper position. Thank you very much. Side by side into turn one and more contact between the, the Alpha Tauri and the uh, unknowing Ferrari ahead of him. Tim Alster probably got caught out surprised there as he doesn't quite know uh, why Reapers have decided to brake so late and defend so hard. Doni on the fresher tires. I think it would have been wiser for Reapy um, to let the uh, Mercedes pass, but he really didn't want to. But it looks like Donis has fallen, actually fallen victim to um, the collision there. He's lost a bit of front wing there. So uh, no good news there for the Mercedes driver. Plenty of uh, drama going on here in Tier 2. In the meanwhile, Dark getting pressurized by Remco. Who's now almost 3 seconds away from Psycho. He's going to disappear on the horizon if he doesn't get past this Ferrari quick. And if Domi, Domi fights hard enough, um, we might potentially see him. Wow, look at the move there. An excellent move there on the inside of the infamous right-hander. Domi swooping himself into the fourth position. He really doesn't want to stay behind them. Uh, uh, Alpha Tari there too long. He's breaking very late, nearly touching the rear of uh, the Alpine driver of uh, Remco. But what an incredible overtake there for, uh, for Domi. Absolutely insane. Now Remco getting ahead of Dark. And Domi getting ahead of Dark as well. And immediately challenging Remco for the second place. Now a McLaren 1-2 is looking very likely all of a sudden. That is, of course, if they both can save their tires just enough to spoil Remco's party. Dark is trying to come back at him, trying to go around the outside, but Domi's having none of it, though. Thing is, Dark is overtaking him off the track, and there's more contact there, this time between the McLaren and the Ferrari. Domi's having none of it. He's telling uh, Dark to get out of the way. Your ties are old. I'll be much faster, at least for now. He's not appreciative of uh, Dark trying to get back at him, that's for sure. So that is costing Domi some time trying to get into third place. Kozzi has managed to get back past them. Remco, in the meanwhile, is getting some clear air. He's no longer involved in any battle. There's no DRS threat right behind him, so he can start his charge toward the head of the race. He's 2.7 seconds clear of him. With six laps to go, that's what he will have to do. Another penalty there for disaster heading into the pit lane he's gonna be a one lap down it might just be a retirement for him then 
And Remco was using every single bit of his battery, which is now run dry. Completely empty, that battery is. As Kozzy goes very, very defensive on Domi, trying to stay ahead of him as much and as long as he can. Domi really wants to get a double McLaren podium, I think. And Dark, despite his old tires, is hanging really nicely there. It's an epic drive there for the Ferrari driver. And Kozzy is going to have to go defensive again. Is it going to happen? Domi with a very late breaking there. He manages finally to get ahead of the Alpha Tauri once more. Now he has a two second gap to Remco. Not ideal for him. Another penalty for disaster in the meanwhile. I will not make the pun. I will resist. <laughs> I will absolutely resist. I'll do my best. I'll not say anything. So then, many things have happened. The top seven is still relatively close together, but everything from Leclerc down... Looks like they've all had to make an, ex make an extra pit stop. 18 seconds from P7 to P8. This race is quite chaotic, if I'm honest. But I, I like that. There's plenty of things to commentate on. I'd rather have this than a boring race where everybody just uh, keeps following one another. So far, both Tier 3 and Tier 2 have delivered pretty much in their own... Uh, Interesting way, so to say. So Kozzi has a bit of a problem now. He's getting chased by uh, a Ferrari with ancient tires and a uh, Williams with much fresher tires. What will happen there? It looks like Dark's gonna have a go on Kozzi. And he does! Oh dear, it's pushing him in wide in fact. Kozzi having none of that. He wants to get back at him, but he does have to have to look in his rear mirrors as Fraser is also right behind him. He will have DRS. Both of them will have DRS. And that means neither of them will be able to make a move there, at least for now. As Remco is now slowly starting to close the gap from those 2.0 seconds, only 2.2 remain. As Big Turbina now swoops into P8 after an overtake on Leclerc. The soft tires are starting to see the end of their life cycle. Domi is not able to catch uh, Remco. And Remco is slowly getting closer, but there's only four laps remaining after this one. So he's gonna have to get the hurry up, otherwise Cycle will win. Two point two seconds. The medium tires are now in their primes pretty much, and he's gonna have to make the most of them. But Psycho is pushing for his life. He's giving it all. He's still got quite a bit of battery left. And that is the bad news for Remco. He's got pretty much none left. So he can't really rely on extra power to get himself closer. And you have a yellow flag as Wisp is now out of the race. He's crashed and it's... Oh my god, it's a safety car. It's a safety car. Wisp is out. He was looking for a race win. And um, we have a Abu Dhabi situation here. <laughs> this race just never stops surprising me. What will they do now? That Psycho's uh, lead gone. And Remco's charge gone. But it is a good chance for Domi to win the race. Will they come in? That's the big question. Just when you think things couldn't get any weirder, they do. <laughs> Many people are pitting now. Um, now I'm gonna have to quickly think what does the safety car do in this game when it comes out this late. It will have to come in by the end of lap 27 I think. As Disaster gets another drive through penalty. This man, I don't know what he's doing but it's definitely not his day. It has to be only one lap. As soon as the lead of the field gets behind the safety car. I think it will come in as soon as it approaches the final sector. Will they stay out though? They've got a big gap to uh, Leclerc. Or sorry, Big Turbina. No, Tim Ulster in fact. They do have a big gap. So they might just come in to be sure. No! Let's look at this. Psycho is staying out. Remco is coming in and he's the only one, apart from uh, Dark and Kazi, to do so. Did he just give up a potential win? A 
of course, it completely makes sense for a dark to come in as his tires are pretty much dead. Kossi is doing the same thing and he's getting held up by the Ferrari there. I think he's also serving a penalty. Yes, he's also serving a penalty. A five second penalty. I can't remember when he got that one. But at least he's free of those penalties now. Wow, okay, what a turn of events. Um, and while we might question the decision that Remco has made, he's only lost one position, really. Two positions, realistically. And there is an Aston Martin in between them, though. So that might be the thing that might just go wrong. Disaster, a lap down, is in between Fraser and Remco. Okay, 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 okay. If Remco can get past disaster quick enough which uh, will happen because disaster must move out of the way it means this man will have a great shot at victory but he will have very little time to do so he's in p4 yes and dark this man is doing amazing i mean he started p10 which wasn't too bad either but look at this guy psycho Outside of the top 10. That's where he started. And there he is. And the safety car is going to come in. So that means we'll have two laps of racing left. It will be a mighty sprint for the victory. And this is what we want to see. It's currently McLaren 1-2. to two. Will they fight each other? Or will they be uh, using some strategy and trying to keep everybody behind by driving smart? Will they fight for victory or will they fight for the team? Let's see what will happen there as they come round the final corner. Two laps of racing remain and Psycho, sorry, Psycho is actually off. Got a great restart there. Domi being a bit asleep and Remco already on the rear of uh, Fraser there. But he is not gonna, he's actually gonna have to go down the inside. Two cars in once. Remco from P4 all the way to P2. Fraser, oh, and it's Domi who's getting touched there. Out he goes. No more victory for him there. And Psycho is now alone fighting for victory on his old soft tires. His decision to stay out might have not been wise after all. As Remco is all on the rear of him. Getting ready to pounce whenever he can. He's good, just going to have to stay patient. His tires are fresher and much, much, much quicker. There are actual big drama there for the second McLaren who's now fallen down to P9. No more points for him. And Remco is looking feisty. Very, very feisty. Dark then pressurizing um, Fraser for third place. And they're having contact and much more contact there as they're crashing into one another. Uh, Fraser somehow bumping that Ferrari there. And that means Dark going into third place. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. But it didn't look very nice at all. Psycho fighting for his life. Remco is this almost looks it almost looks like he's just waiting to get past. He's using every bit of his battery possible. And Remco has still got plenty of that battery left. And oh my god, what's going on here? Fraser now has fallen out. Podomi is down to P14. And look at them go. Psycho's battery is dead, and he's already slotting in behind Remco, and he's now leading the race. He is in P1, but Psycho is not giving up yet as he tries to go around the outside in the final lap of the race. It's still all or nothing, and he knows it, and that means now he's under pressure by Dark, who's trying to run into second place. He might be absolutely surprised he'll be in this position, but Psycho really doesn't want the Ferrari to get past, and it's another spin! It's the other McLaren! He's getting out! And no more podium for McLaren. It's absolutely insane these final few race, uh, sorry, final few moments of this race. What is going on? I predicted it was going to be a big battle, but I didn't expect it to be this insane. Oh my god. Dark was desperate for the podium there, and he has it now. Um, one thing I know for sure is that Remco will win the race, but I think the FIA will have many things to say about what happened in Tier 2 tonight. While Tier 3 had plenty of clean racing, and I'm just going to say and be honest that Tier 2 uh, didn't quite live up to the standards. Of not every single driver did it, of course, but... Oh my god. 
Here he is though, the man in the Alpine, the Dutch driver, will win the first race of the Tier 2 season. Renko van Putten, as the English would say, wins the Bahrain Grand Prix. Tim Alster coming home in second place after a penalty of his teammate, who finishes in third for now. Kossi and P4, Reapy fifth place, and Big Turbina, surprise, surprise, managed to claw himself up to sixth place. Psycho then in P7, he's going to be fuming along with his teammates. It's going to be a very angry pair of McLarens here tonight. Doni retiring from the race in the pit lane just before the finish line. Personally, I would have just finished the race because that's better for the standings, but he decided not to do so. So then, Leclerc in P8, Maka in ninth. And one of the Alfa Romeo's in P10. Remco then winning the race. Wow! I don't know what happened. As far as I'm aware, uh, Remco did do nothing wrong. But I think the FIA might want to investigate uh, Dark. But that's not for me to judge, of course. I'm only the commentator. <clears throat> Celebrations all round. Let's have a look at the final results without any FIA interference, of course. So Remco winning, Tim Alster in P2, Dark in P3, Cozzy in 4th, VP in P5, Big Turbina coming in in 6th, Psycho then in the end P7 only, De Clark in P8, Maka in 9th, and Deegserv in P10. As for the rest, here you are. So let's see if any drivers are willing to get themselves an interview here live on Twitch. Let's see if we can at least talk to Remco. He'll for sure have some things to say um, about what happened today. What a race. Many, many exciting things happened. Let's see if I can possibly tag anyone for interview. Somebody saying this was a feisty race in the Discord. I mean, that's a proper name uh, for this race. If we have the man in P2, Tim, waiting for an interview here. Uh, there you are then, Tim, first and foremost. Congratulations on your second place. Um, you. uh, a lot of things happened. Uh, did you expect to end there after the chaos? <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. Uh, um, to, to start, um, I, I didn't even uh, knew that I would start the race uh, because there were 20 attendants, but one, one guy didn't... Uh, come so uh, I got the call to get the re uh, to reserve so I entered the ga game a eight minutes before quality ended <laughs> and uh, so this uh, ro whole race was a roller coaster from the beginning to the end oh my god um, but when I got uh, in in, la in lap 17 or 18 I don't know I got front wing damage and I thought oh uh, now my race is over I mm -hmm. got P7 P8 and that's that's it and then the late safety car came and it moved it switched my race completely. It was a complete turnaround, and then the, that last two laps where there were so much chaos, and I, <coughs> and I was the one the lucky one who survived everything <laughs> in the end. Yeah, you were so. able to avoid most of the uh, weird incidents by the end, and therefore claiming a uh, second place. So uh, yeah, definitely a big surprise for yourself, as you said. Um, so yeah, let's see what what the uh, what the FIA will say about these. What, what what things did you see there out on track? Because it was so there were so many things happening. Um, what is your point of view on of, on the chaos of this race? Oh, my point of view. Yeah, um, uh, I saw my really hard fighting, but it was all 
okay, but sometimes uh, there was too much wheel banging. Wheel banging, I would guess, uh, I would say. And then, yeah, it, it, I think in the last two laps, especially, there was too much adrenaline in everyone, and so uh, mistakes uh, happens quite uh, more. So I think that's a normal thing, but uh, it shouldn't happen that often. Yeah. All right, thanks for your insights. Um, enjoy your surprise podium after your surprise yeah. entry in this race. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see some more uh, epic uh, things coming from you. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, I hope so too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See you then. Cheers. And the other Ferrari driver is with us as well. It is Dark, um, who in the end finished P2, but then got P3 due to a uh, penalty. Um, so um, there you are then, P3, uh, a lot of things happened. Um, first and foremost, you started, if I got it correctly, about P10. Uh, let's start at the start of the race, the first half, before the second safety car. How was that for you? Uh, I wasn't feeling too good. Uh, I know I could do a better quality time. Uh, starting 10th isn't always the best, obviously. Uh, but overall, the, the safety car helped me. Um, twice and uh, yeah and put me p3 yeah and then came the uh, third safety car which uh, switched the things around for many drivers including yourself uh, because you decided to stay out during the second one and then coming during the third um, and then there was the big moment of contact between yourself and psycho uh, what happened there uh, I don't know I I thought I left him more than enough space uh, uh, I'll have to I'll have to look back at the race and see if I did or not um, I mean it, in the end it, it is we're both hard racing it's last lap and we're both going for it I do feel like he pushed me off for for me getting that penalty but like I said I'll have to look back at it all right um, so p3 for now let's see what the FIA will do with all the uh, there's probably going to be uh, many reports coming in um, is there anything you saw of, uh, of that chaos because so many things happen at once um, and you were in the car, so you might have seen several things happening there. Is there anything you can tell us about what you saw? Um, no, not really. Uh, maybe the last safety car restart, Remco maybe sent it a little bit too hard on the inside. But, I mean, he had to. He was going for the win. All right. Cheers. Uh, thank you and congratulations on their P3. Uh, let's see what next week will bring. Do you think there will be another podium in Saudi Arabia? Oh, well, I hope it's my home race, so hopefully. All right, cheers. So good luck to that then. Uh, and uh, Thank you. thanks for joining us. No problem. All right, so unfortunately, no Remco in the interview waiting room for us. So no comments from the race winner, unfortunately. But man, what a race it was. So many things have happened. Um, already plenty of discussions are going on in the Discord. Um, let's see what will happen. For now, though, this is the result of what it will be for Tier 2 for tonight. Um, there's uh, one more European tier coming up tomorrow at 10 p.m. sharp with uh, tier one of the fastest 20 cars of the lot in Europe at least. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, I was Frostbreath commentating for you. You will hear from me next week in tier three Saudi Arabia. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it all and uh, have a great good and morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. Good day.